Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nemesis Insider. We interview your favorite content creators here. I am James Autumn. Down below me with the beautiful, beautiful smile is... You can say it now. Vengeance, how are you? Oh, hey, welcome. Welcome to Nemesis Insider. <laughs> what a lovely smile. And then, of course... James forced me to do this. <laughs> I didn't force you to do anything. I was just saying you have a lovely smile and you decide to hold it. That's, that's on you. That's not me. Not me at all. But, but we have a new guest. Someone just hits me right here to have on the show. Someone I had to talk to about seven different representatives to get to. And uh, graciously, he said that he would give 15 minutes of his time to us tonight. And <laughs> retro genius, Shrom, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. It is a uh, rare and auspicious privilege, some would say an honor, to be here. Oh, thank you. We work so hard on the show. We do like a minimum of uh, one hour research. So we really put in the effort here. And we're just okay. We're so honored to, to have you with us tonight. That's great. Yeah, no, that's more, that's more uh, research than I have done. And we, we, we so. did like the obligatory google search um looked at we like found some suspicious things that we don't want to talk about on Twitch. well that's why that's why i rebranded was to get rid of the oh old, oh uh, yeah. okay okay that's, oh, gotcha that's the pro move boy we are gonna have to cut out so many interview questions wow yeah good <sighs> yeah good luck with that good thing this is all pre-recorded yeah pre-recorded uh nobody's live uh we're, they're not gonna see this they're not gonna see our mess ups we're gonna have an editor come in and just cut to the good parts and uh all the lovely lovely things but let's actually get into the question let's 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 talk about the the man the myth the legend the shrum the shroom the shroom uh, are we gonna do shroom or shrum tonight i mean i'm gonna get doesn't just confused matter. now okay it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever bakes your cookies uh you're, you're good to go you don't want to know what bakes my cookies you're asking like a terrible question there and i can give you the answer and you want one well more. i i would hope it's an oven i was gonna ask the immediate question will you bake my cookies oh that not a baker well, that sounds like well, a no that's that's a hard no i'm getting <laughs> darn happy birthday james oh well thank you Let's focus on that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The the host of uh, tonight's podcast. Well, actually, the host of every night's podcast, Mr. James Autumn, has turned into lovely 22 today. Yeah. I wish. Change one of the twos with a three, and there you go. Yep. Uh, so 23. Got it. Got yeah, it. yeah. I was a year off. Yeah. A year off. It's Can't okay. believe it. It happens. It happens. You don't look a day over 18. <laughs> I'm glad. I wish I had this beard when I was 18. I really do. But I didn't. Me too, buddy. Me too. But Shrum, how'd you get here? What, what's, what's your origin story? Uh, how did you become the hero that Nemesis didn't know they needed? Oh, I thought you meant here on this podcast. And I was going to say, because you slid into my DMs. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a great start, <laughs> too. That's, that's always a oh. lovely start. Oh, uh, how did I, how did I join Nemesis? Um, I, I don't remember who recruited me. Um, probably solid. It was, it was pro, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was, <laughs> I don't remember if it was Instill or Maz. Uh, one of them reached out. I think it was Maz. I don't know. I'd have to go back. It's been two years now uh that i've been part of this happy wonderful uh community and um yeah someone reached out and was just like hey have you ever considered and i said well let me do some research um i've been uh yeah so anyway i i don't know i did some research i taught some i talked to uh some friends in the uh esports area and said hey have you heard of these people do you know anything about them and they said yeah yeah i've heard of uh instill i've heard of maz i've heard of 
this, that, and the other. And I said, any, anything I need to be aware of any, any, uh, problems that might pop up. And they said, Nope, you're good. So I said, all right, great. And here Fantastic. We Were you a retro guy at the time or how long have you been in the retro genre? I was a, uh, I was a retro streamer at the time. Yeah. So when I started on Twitch back in December of, um, 2017, I started off actually as a PUBG streamer and, um, that was toxic. Met a lot of good people. <laughs> um, this, no, and, and not like, not like the community is toxic. Um, excuse me um but uh the it it made me very toxic to play <laughs> and uh it just wasn't it wasn't the direction i got a, i got feedback from a few people that were like you know um you're kind of a dick when you, <laughs> when you play PUBG." i was like yeah that's fair that's that's reasonable um uh, so i started doing so I've always been like a retro player on the side. Uh, and I started doing retro Saturday nights. Um, I don't know, February, 2018. And immediately my view count jumped by like 20 average. Oh, wow. Uh, and so I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm clearly made to be a retro streamer and not a uh, PUBG streamer. <laughs> Coming from a oh. PUBG background myself, it, it it made me a little bit on the angie side. Like I, I had, I probably had some blood pressure issues all the time. Like I couldn't do good. I did better in solos, but when I teamed up with friends, I would break up friendships because I'd be like, "You need to do your job," and just attacking everyone. <laughs> now, I was so now, bad. <laughs> coming from someone who does competitive gaming as well. Siege. That was a that was a moment of time that I don't want to talk about anymore. That was rough. I became. I think it's just FPSs. Like let's see, <laughs> competitive FPS. Yeah. yeah. It I does yeah, it so to everybody. I was I was a pro Battlefield Two player back in the day. Um, oh. <clears throat> so I've done competitive. Uh, I've done competitive FPSs, and um, I still play ranked Apex. Um but PUBG well and we, but we've got to be fair PUBG was dog shit like there was a lot blue there was hole, a lot wrong with it there was a <laughs> lot wrong with that game back when back in 2017 <laughs> 2018 2019 <laughs> 2020 like it's only recently stopped being uh, a horrific dumpster fire of a game um, oh i agree because i played it recently too and yeah. it's it's not bad no, it's I, uh, I I play it. Yeah, it's so much better now. Exactly, floppy. Uh, uh, PUBG's PUBG's like they've ironed out a lot of the kinks, but the problem is, is back then, um, you know, I could blame my teammates, I could blame myself, or I could just yell at Blue Hole for being a, a dog shit game. And <laughs> God, that game was so bad back then. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was better that I that I stopped playing it uh, live on stream. What I hated is I used to actually stream competitions where I would stay up till five in the morning to play people in Sweden. And I would get so, so angry just during the whole process. And nobody really came to watch me. I, I, I wonder why, because that game was so buggy and my computer couldn't run it. So I was having computer issues on top of actually trying to get a, a kill or a win. So it was, it was just, yep. it was rough, yep. bad time. Yeah. <coughs> yep. But you blew up with retro and what have been like some of the, some of the benefits to that, obviously a, a lower blood pressure and salt intake probably. Mm. Right. Well, I mean the salt. Uh, well, well, <laughs> and the blood pressure <laughs> have you seen the platformers that he's played i've been there for a lot yeah okay so are there other health benefits to it <laughs> what are the main <laughs> health benefits of retro <laughs> uh the main health benefits of retro that's a good question because uh instead of getting um instead of getting carpal tunnel from mouse and keyboard 
uh, because I play mouse and keyboard on a on shooters as God intended, and not with a controller. Um, Whoa. <laughs> PC gaming master race. Um, we're just gonna fire some. We're gonna fire some shots right now. Um, why is your favorite game Dino Ricky? Uh, will someone please ban out uh, Jaeger Bombastic <laughs> for being a uh, pile of garbage? Jaeger, um, you had one shot. You had one you shot. Had one shot. <laughs> you had one shot, Jaeger. Um, <sighs> then you, you you screwed it up, kid. You came in. You came in hot. Yeah, so instead of getting carpal tunnel from using a mouse and keyboard, uh, now I get I get Nintendo thumb. Um, so no, no, I can't say there's any health benefits. I, well, I will say I will say the one benefit is um, if you get angry with a mouse and keyboard and you throw that shit against the wall, you're probably going to break it. You cannot break a Nintendo controller. Those things are made to last. It's it's physically if if you if you uh, have got a you know NES controller right here, good luck breaking this. You can't do it. <laughs> they need to like make the, like warships and international space stations and bomb shelters out of this plastic because you can't break it. Physically impossible. The eighties right. were such a good time. They were. They were. <laughs> Sean, we got a question from Mr. Sensei Solo. Have you ever played Banjo Kazooie, and what are your thoughts on it? I have played Banjo Kazooie. So my my retro experience uh, is I uh, I grew up with the Nintendo. Um, the consoles I had at home were the Nintendo and the Nintendo sixty four. I skipped the SNES. I didn't have a Game Boy. Um, after the sixty four, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I switched to PC gaming, so I didn't have a PlayStation. I didn't have an Xbox. Um, I had a Wii. I've got a Switch now. Um, but the Nintendo 64 is kind of my end of my my retro. And when I stream retro, I don't stream PlayStation 1 or 2 or anything like that. Um, so to that end, have I played Banjo-Kazooie? Yes, I have. Do I like it? Not really. Uh, it's a collectathon. Um, it's kind of like Donkey Kong sixty four. It's just it's a collectathon, and those really aren't my those really aren't my jam. Um, it's not really my you know. A lot of people love them. Um, it's not a it's not a bad game per se. It's just not a genre that I particularly love. So now for those that don't know all the retro gamer terms, what is a collectathon? It's just that you're like you're the whole point of the game is to collect things. Oh, uh, okay. Like that's it's just like that's I don't know how else to describe it. Like you're you're going out and you've got to collect like you've got you'll, you'll go into a you'll go into an area um and you have to collect like all the bananas or whatever the MacGuffin is. Um, gotcha. You've got to get all the things, the puzzle pieces, the pieces of the beehive or whatever nonsense you've got to do. And there's puzzles, honey, you, there's puzzles that you have to go through in order to get whatever the MacGuffin is. Um, it's, yeah, it's just not my bag. So. so for retro, like where does the line stop like in, in, in your world? Because, you know. Retro can go up into the aughts now for a lot of different things. Where does where do you think retro gaming stops? Okay. Now, do I want to be a uh, pedantic asshole about? You tell me. Do you want me to be a pedantic asshole about this, or do you want me to give the short answer? Let's mm. go with the true and honest shroom. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with the authentic <laughs> experience here. Break it down for us. Retro. Uh, retro is not an age. Retro is an aesthetic. So retro is actually a misnomer. Um, the 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 correct terminology, I guess, would be like vintage or classic. Uh, retro is a feel. It's an aesthetic. So uh, Stardew Valley could be considered retro. The Messenger could be considered retro. Shovel Knight. Um, it's like that 8-bit kind of yeah that 18 16 style. yeah the pixel style that is retro so like if you want to be a, a pedantic asshole about it retro is a style not a time period yeah now 
if I take off my pedantic hat and um, choose to be a man of the people here, as far as as far as the retro definition when it comes to Twitch and like the age cutoff, which is what people usually ask, you know, what's the cutoff for retro? It's personal. That's that's such a contentious thing. It's kind of like asking someone, you know, is PlayStation or Xbox better? Well, you want Windows or you want Apple? You want Android or you want iPhone? Like people are going to come out of the woodworks and they're going to be they're just going to be jerks about it. Um, there's a couple of ways to define retro that I've heard. Um, anything 20 years and older is one way. Anything that doesn't have and this is this one's going to be a slippery slope but anything that doesn't have HD <laughs> capability hmm. uh, and older. Hmm. Now that's going to be a slippery slope because in 10 years from now, PS3, you know, uh, the Xbox 360, you're getting, you're getting close to those being retro. Cause if you look at that 20 to 20 year, you know, <laughs> division, me personally, um, PS2 is probably where I put the cutoff. I kind of agree with that one. I will be honest. I would put the original Xbox and PS2. That'd be my cutoff for what I would consider retro. And I put quotations because it's ever changing. (laughs) However you want to view retro, that's retro. Yeah. No, it's you think of it as pre-online gaming. Yeah. Floppy, I think. But even that floppy is a the Super Nintendo had the ability to go online. The Sega Genesis had the ability to go online. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> now if you're talking about gaming with other <clears throat> players, yeah, I can see, you see, and it's, we're, we're, we're all experiencing this together. It's a hard thing to define. Um, but like I said, if you're not being a pedantic asshole about it, my personal <laughs> definition, PS2 and earlier, so that includes original Xbox. Um, but then again, if you're going with just like a like a graphical, uh, you know, GameCube maybe starts to go in there. Uh, and the GameCube was released, you know, a year after the PS2. When it comes to PC games, you know, the first Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, Hexen, um, you know, obviously all the Commander Keens and, and things like that. But, you know... OG Quake, um, OG Half Life is around the same. It's hard to define. You know, it's it's fluid. I like that. I like that a lot because uh, it definitely seems like you can you can run into some people who feel like there there is a certain age to where it's retro appropriate and where it isn't, and mm-hmm. usually they will cut off like uh, near the PlayStation Two. Or they'll they'll cut off the PlayStation One completely and disregard it as a retro console. Yeah, I think PS One absolutely is retro. I think PS Two absolutely is retro. I mean, PS Two again came out in two thousand. It's twenty two. PS Two can drink, you know. So <laughs> can the GameCube. You can you can take them to a bar. Uh, so I mean, people like <laughs> that's it's weird that you're like, oh yeah, I remember games twenty years ago. It was Super Mario on the Nintendo. It's like, nah, dog. No. That was the, that was the PS2. Like, you got to recalibrate a little bit. <laughs> oh. High score on Netflix. Yes, that's an excellent documentary. Yeah, high score um, is a really, really. Uh, that's a good series. It was what five, six episodes. I think it was. Uh, yeah, that one was really, really good. I like that one a lot. Hmm. I don't. We got know a about question it. from Luna. Uh, what game? Is there a game that you've stopped playing but absolutely loved? And if so, why? Uh, are we talking retro or just games in general? Seems like it um, could be a general, right? Maybe. Doesn't specify. I Let's go both. If you, can, if you have one for both, let's go both. But if you only have one for one of the two categories, go with that one. All right, I'll let you two go first. I've got enough yakety yakking. <laughs> I mean, for me, a game that I I I love, but I just stopped playing is Apex. I I still love it. Like it's a gr- I it's a fun game, but it's just to me like I lost interest, and it was just <coughs> turned toxic. And I just I was like, no, 
I'll still go back and play it every time there's a new update because I can't stop. But it's just, eh. I don't hate it, but I also don't really love it either. <laughs> That's kind of my relationship with uh, Global Offensive. I used to be really heavy into that too before I thought PUBG was going to be a better alternative, which uh, we already talked about that. But I don't think I could go back to Global Offensive and just feel the magic that I felt when I was in the prime of it. I just don't think there's anything left for me to to go back and try and gain and grind for like there was before. Mm -hmm. ah. <sighs> games games that I love but that I've stopped playing. Um... Hmm. PUBG might be one of them. Um, it might be one that I, I just don't play it as much, uh, mostly because I hate solo queuing and I don't have very many friends that play it anymore. Um, Bioshock, hmm. ooh, might be that's one a spicy one that I really enjoyed when I was. I would say a lot of the games that I've uh, stopped playing are usually. Uh, story driven like first person um uh, borderlands 3 falls into that category bioshock falls into that category um anything that's like an action rpg or has rpg elements i usually find that uh, i don't have time to complete the whole story and i get distracted for a week or two and then when i want to pick it back up i don't remember where i am and I have no idea what quest I'm on. Um, I have no idea what's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just have, I can't go pick it back up because I feel like I'd have to start all over again. And so that's the reason why I never finished Bioshock. I loved Bioshock. I got like, I don't know, halfway through it, three quarters of the way through it. And I got distracted with school or something and just never picked it back up. That's a that's a big thing with me as well with like solo games. Everyone's like, why don't why don't you do like story based games? Because I don't have the time to run through it all in one go. And if I don't run through it all in one go, it's like I I get distracted, and then I'm like, well, I don't want to really jump back into it because I don't remember what happened or where I'm yeah. at. Yep. And then the story is ruined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's my that's uh yeah that's the problem is I just get jrpgs yeah same you and i I just get so i get lost and i forget the story and so now when i play on my own i'm usually playing things that i can pick up and put down you know path of exile or terraria or apex or something like that that i don't have to remember what the what the hell i'm doing yeah because they do like seasons on uh path of exile which i'm i'm a, I'm a player of that too i enjoy it myself you know it's a good game. It's yeah. the skill tree. I have I've never ever gotten to what seems like an end game for that. That's just impossible. But yeah, it's poe poe. It, that's a grind. Yeah, <laughs> there is no end game. You are the end game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. For those who don't know, if you look at the skill tree in this game, it can start in like one little bubble, and then it just goes into this massive, massive tree of life of just everything you can do. And that's generally for like one class, all the things it can offer. So it just, it's, it's a game that I, I've seen people finish, like they finished all the content that they do for a season. But like, as far as a skill tree, I don't think I've ever really seen anyone do a complete skill tree run for their classes. It's, it's actually a pretty amazing game for that. Cause it offers that much replayability. And, uh, you know, there's another game that comes to mind is that I was playing with a lot of people. I was really dedicated to and that was uh Elden Ring and god as soon as I dropped off for a week I didn't know where I was or what to do and I didn't go back to it <laughs> yeah 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 exactly can I uh can I can I step away for two seconds and yeah you talks amongst yourselves yeah sure yeah thing. yeah totally okay I'll be uh I'll be back in just a sec sorry no you're fine <laughs> So Chase, you... No, I do agree with that Elden Ring thing, though, James. I will be completely and utterly honest with you. <coughs> I stopped playing it for a little bit, and I just didn't want... Like, I started to get angry when I jumped back into it, because as soon as you drop it for a little bit, 
you lose every muscle memory <laughs> that you had and then you're just dying and just getting frustrated at every little thing and look at our dying light too we we actually tried to do together <laughs> i know that's the other thing. i get yelled at i get yelled at by my mods because they're like you never finish a game and i'm like i i know i know i don't finish games because they get distracted or i get bored was there a was there an end game to v rising i forget there wasn't really an end game mm, okay so that's that's that doesn't even come into the conversation then because like, i i know we've started so many games together <laughs> dude it's because we're the same we're literally the same like we will get we'll get distracted and then go back to the roots you go back to fallout and i'll go somewhere <laughs> i'll figure something out <laughs> no man's sky i yes floppy no man's sky i remember when that game first came out everyone hated on it so so much but when I first played it, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. You know, it's single player. It's just single player at the time when it first came out. And then it finally dropped to multiplayer. But by the time it dropped it, I had already stopped playing it because I'm like, man, I'm bored. <laughs> and Sean, what's up with the no refund, Sky? Like, that was year one. I will agree. That was year one. I, I actually had a friend buy me a copy for Steam because he had the hopes that we would be able to play together and go on these awesome mm -hmm. space adventures, but initially it didn't have it. And as soon as he found out there was no multiplayer to it, he and me was like, dude, I just refunded it. <laughs> and then he bought it years later and came back to it. Okay, I'm back. sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome back. No problem. No problem. My girls just got here, and while I think you two are delightful, um, my daughters are wildly more important. So, oh no, oh, no. So, that that dude, you got to be a dad first. Yeah, you know that's actually something. If you feel comfortable answering, what's up? Is how do you how do you manage being a dad and a gamer partner on Twitch and being in the community as much as you are every almost every night? How do you how how do you balance uh, it? Well, um, I don't know that I'm comfortable talking about the whole situation okay um but so when i started streaming um i was going to school full-time for a computer science degree and i was working full-time and family and all that um fortunately i graduated school um but beyond that i, I don't know i feel like it's anything that you're passionate about you make you make time for the things that are important and you don't make time for the things that you don't. Um, I'm I'm fortunate that my day job I work from home, um, and so I'm able to, you know, have Twitch pulled up if I need to, or you know, kind of cruise around and lurk other people's streams and, you know, stuff at night. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, I guess. Yeah, you just make time for things that are important, I suppose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, while I don't have any heavy circumstances like that, it's like working and gaming and then like that balance is is hard enough for me cuz you know, you work, you come back home, you probably take an hour to yourself, right? Then you probably then you just go straight into a stream and sometimes you can say, "Yeah, I'm going to do 3 hours." You'll end up doing it 6 hours or more, and then you got to wake up and do it all over again and that's that's a huge strain. That is such a huge strain. Uh, I always, it, absolutely. Go ahead, Vengeance. Sorry, bud. I was going to say, I always tell people, take the time for yourself, no matter what. Like, yes, streaming is going to always be there, but you got to make sure that you have a healthy, men you know, mentally, no matter what, because everything about streaming is mental. You got to make sure that you're not getting burnout. You're not, you know, pushing yourself too hard. And all three of us, we you know we've all we all worked we all we all stream and work and try to balance life plus you know gaming and it gets hard sometimes you get a day off from work you, you might want to just relax yeah yeah when i when i first started off streaming um the first year so 2000 so essentially my first year streaming was a complete year it was 2018 um i averaged 35 hours a week streaming oh wow uh so a full-time job, essentially, on top of having a full-time job, on top of going to school full-time, 
and um, having, uh, you know, uh, family. And uh, I did that because I thought that if I took a break, uh, if I wasn't live, somehow it was going to be detrimental to my channel. It was going to be detrimental to my growth. Um, and now I stream four nights a week, you know, and I have, uh, three nights off. Uh, I think there's no, there's no right answer for everyone. It depends on, it depends on, I think, I think a lot of it depends on why you stream, you know, and I think I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again. The most important advice I can give anyone who wants to uh, create content for a living, um, be honest why you're doing it. If you're doing it to make friends, great. If you're doing it to make money, great. If you're doing it to just have a thing to do, great. It doesn't matter what it is. Be honest with yourself and be honest with your community about why you're doing it. I've had so many friends who've come to me and have been like, uh, you know, they, they start streaming and then they give up a couple of months in because they're like, no one's supporting me. No one's, you know, I'm not making the money. I'm not making any money. And it's like, okay, well, that was something that was important to you. You wanted to stream because you needed to uh, bring in additional revenue. Okay. Did you tell anyone that you were doing that? Like, did you bring it up to your community or whoever was watching you or whatever reason? Like, they're like, no. Like, okay, well then, how do you expect people to... Now, that's, that's not to say that if you say, hey, I've got bills to pay, pay my bills. It's not to say people are going to do that. But if you're not honest with yourself about why you're doing it, um, you're going to disappoint yourself. Most definitely. And it uh, looks like one of our viewers has a comment where they say, <clears throat> streaming audiences can be fickle. I can see why a streamer would be worried about taking breaks. Got to hope the community is strong enough to be able to take breaks in stride. Yeah. Ewan, uh, Ewan is one of my boys. I, I, I know him. And he's right. Yeah, they can be, they can be fickle. Both of those are very good comments. I really, I love, I love what you said about, you know, just be honest with yourself as a streamer. Sit down, have that one-on-one -on -one talk with yourself and be like, hey, why am I doing this? Do, mm -hmm. do, do I want to make someone smile? Do I just, you know, because how I started it was I would just go live on my PlayStation. I knew nothing about streaming, nothing, you know? Go live, stream some Overwatch while I was playing with my buddies. We'd just sit there, BS the whole time, and have fun. And, like, at the time, I was like, dang. So that's what streaming's all about, just having fun. And that's kind of what I built everything off of was, I'm, you know, I'm not the best at games. I'm just here to entertain. I'm here to have fun. That's <laughs> my purpose and why I chose to stream. Yeah. there's. No, I don't think there's... there. It, I get so irritated when I see people who are pitching these uh, courses about, you know, uh, uh, <sighs> this is the path to success. Watch right. this YouTube video to learn mm -hmm. to learn how to be. It's like, no, it's not <laughs> how to how go works. from zero to a thousand viewers yeah. in a month. It's like, <laughs> that's dude, not how that works. <laughs> it's not. That's not how I've been streaming. I've been streaming four and a half, almost five years, be five years in December. <laughs> Uh, I just recently uh, was lucky enough to become partnered. Um, and the path that I took is not the path that everyone else should take. Um, the path that everyone else takes is not the path that I should take. And my reasons for streaming are my reasons. And the only consistent thing I've ever seen across every mm -hmm. single stream is, uh, you know, just be honest about why you're doing it. And don't have the personality of wallpaper paste. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't sit there with the poker face of like of the best player in the world and just not have any emotion. Just like sit there. You can have the nicest setup, you can have the nicest lights and the nicest camera and the greatest audio. Some people just aren't cut out for it. I agree. Got to be honest, you know, it's, <laughs> some people just aren't cut out for it. 
I'm sorry, but <laughs> you know, that's just is what it is. And uh, I actually want to comment on something you said there, Chase. Uh, when you are wanting to start streaming, just do it. Don't wait for the bells and whistles. You got yeah, a no. PlayStation, start streaming on the PlayStation. It'll grow. Go for it. Yeah. <clears throat> Run straight, head first. Literally dive head first into it. Because if you don't, you're going to sit there stressing about it. You're going to be like, well, what am I doing? What can I do better? Like this person has, you know, two dual, triple PC set up, 90 monitors, 20, 20 cameras, and two microphones. Like I need that to be a streamer. No, you don't. No, you don't. I have had you just need yourself. <laughs> I've I've literally had people try and mimic my setups in the past and then do like three streams and give up and be like, Well dude, I bought everything that you close to what you had, you know, I try to set up everything close to what you had. I'm like that's not the way to do it. That's that's just gonna be a waste of inve- of an investment, especially since you're gonna give up after three streams. All that money mm-hmm. you put into specific kind of products and you're not going to use it or apply it, then yeah, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to feel like you, uh, you wasted money. Then you're going to come to me and be like, well, why aren't I, why am I not getting the results that you get? And it's just simple. I, I started on nothing. You know, I started on a little crappy laptop I had from uh trade school. And then <laughs> from there, I just, uh, I just made it work. And eventually when I got more interested, I was like, okay, I'll invest in the microphone. Okay, I'll invest in a camera. I let it grow. I, I'm, I'm the kind of person who plans out things anyway. So I see if I can dedicate to it because when you play guitar for 20 years, sometimes you fall in and out of it. But once you put in results, you always just keep thinking about, okay, I learned a new technique. That means I can get a new thing to reward myself for learning this new technique and sticking to it. So I don't know. I just tell people, start Start with what you got. Just start with what you got. See if you like it. Then you ain't wasted no time and you ain't going to be mad at yourself or feel like you wasted money. You know, uh, streaming yep. can be an investment essentially. Yep. Another, another thing that like a lot of newer streamers don't really like, I guess they don't really <laughs> understand or see it yet is yeah, they'll, they'll start growing and viewers growing, 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 <laughs> reach a peak and then just drop down. And that's just, that's how Twitch is. You know, people have lives, some, you know, lives that are ever changing. And some people like don't understand, (laughs) new streamers won't understand that. And they'll be like, well, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Why is this not working? It's the same thing that I've been doing. Well, there's one thing, maybe switch it up Two, you know, people have lives. They're not going to always be able to be there. And you can't get upset about that. You can't want to throw your whole setup away and say, ah, I'm not cut out for this and stop just drop it right there i uh i just had one of those uh crises of identity just the other day uh, i was talking with my mods about that was um uh worried about uh worried about numbers worried about content worried about all those things uh it's one of those things that i don't think ever really goes away um uh but again if you're honest about why you're doing it you know, then you can, then you can adjust to that. So that is mm-hmm. a huge importance to it. And, uh, you know, if we can switch gears for a second, we've been talking a lot about retro and stuff too, but like outside of the streamer sphere, why retro? What, what keeps you coming back to it? What, what keeps you engaged with it? Uh, nostalgia. Okay. That's the, that's, that's what I've built. Uh, and that's, that's what retro is, um, is it's, it's nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And, uh, every single time it seems like, um, every single time that I, that I stream a game, uh, someone will come in and be like, yeah, I've got memories playing that game. I played that game as a kid, or I watched my brothers play it or watch my, you know, I've had. I've had people, there was someone who was telling me a while ago that the reason why they loved Zelda was because their grandma uh, showed them how to uh, play Zelda 1 oh, wow. on the OG NES. Like, I, it, it was, it was just, it, it, it's representative of a, of a simpler time, you know, um, 
coming home after school and firing up the firing up the Nintendo or getting your buddies and hopping on your bike and riding over to the rental store and pulling your money to yeah to get the you know to get Super Mario three or you know mom letting you rent a game for the weekend and trading trading secrets on the playground I don't know it's just it's it's uh, I trade heavily in nostalgia and um, that's why I keep coming back to it now now I have a question for the the retro gamer guru does blowing in the cartridge actually help no (laughs) no if anything it hurts it uh, because the humidity and the spit in your in your breath uh, is going to corrode the contacts. Yeah. So did it, did it, did it help? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it might've, you know, the humidity and the, the spit or whatever might've created a, a temporary, you know, bridge between the things, but over the long run, it just corroded the uh, connectors and made it worse. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah. I inherited I lied some... to my whole life. <laughs> I inherited yeah. some uh, SNES games uh, years ago from a, from a friend, and I could tell he spit in the cartridge because it was all bronze, oh. copper, mess. A lot of the contacts were just unusable, completely unusable, no. and you could just tell that sometimes maybe he had like some Mountain Dew in his mouth, and he just accidentally spit with it, and you know. <laughs> oh no! I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. No, no, James, come on! It was back in the day. That was Vault. Get it or Volt, Volt or Vault or whatever. There, there Jolt. was also Squirt. Yeah, we. Oh, Jolt. Squirt, yeah. Some, some spitting some balls in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a mess. Like, I think eight out of the ten games he gave me were almost usable but they all had that brown corrosion across them and for people who don't know that they're basically plastic motherboards inside these plastic carts and then they have almost foil like composition of metal that make up what connects to the board inside the console and those corrode so easy which is why they said don't blow on the cartridge it was strictly on the back of it and like Shrum says, sometimes it can cause a bridge. It can make a connection happen. But most of the time, it was probably you just pulling the car out and putting it back in. That was probably the motion that got mm-hmm. it to work again. But we never thought of it that way. <laughs> now, I do want to bring this up because I know Shrum's talking about it in chat. Um, Ellen mentioned uh, retro is more than just about nostalgia. They don't force you into headaches of DLCs or toxic communities or microtransactions. And that's something that we all forget about is back in the day, they were complete games when they released. Now you don't get the complete game until you spend another 40 bucks after that you spent the 60 bucks. <laughs> I, I, or you get the, you, you download the game and then you've got a day one patch <laughs> that's just as big as the game and the servers are crashing because they can't handle the downloads and. I just can't imagine a landscape that doesn't have a battle pass. Who wants to be a part of that? I mean, <laughs> dude, I know, right? Like, if I'm not getting my 20 skins a month, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. If you want the challenge of achievements and feeling like you've done something when it comes to playing your retro games, might I suggest retroachievements.org? Ooh, okay. Tell us Ooh. about this. Uh, retroachievements.org is a community run. Uh, I've got no affiliation with it, but it's something that a lot of retro players use. Uh, it allows you to uh, get achievements on your old retro games. Uh, now, we're going to have a discussion about emulation versus original hardware. Uh, I have original hardware. I also emulate uh, as far as the United States is concerned, and I can't speak for Canada, I can't speak for Europe, I can't speak for anyone else. I'm not a lawyer. None of us here on the Nemesis Insider Podcast are lawyers, and nothing we say should be construed as legal advice. Please consult a lawyer in your own country. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way. Emulation <laughs> in the United States is completely legal. Courts have ruled on it. You can emulate... Uh, that's completely legal. Uh, piracy, we do not condone piracy, nor will we uh, help you find 
the darker parts of the internet where ROMs can be found. Uh, but if you have physical copies of games and you create a digital copy of that game and you have a ROM, uh, you can play it in an emulator and you can use the retro achievements to um, uh, track your progress and earn badges and, and achievements just like you would on PlayStation Network or Xbox or Steam or anything like that. And uh, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's reinvigorated my love of some retro titles. The ability to get those achievements it's kind of cool. Now, would you ever consider speed running? I do. Games? I speed run. I speed run already. Oh, well, I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've ever stopped. I've not been there for one running. of those. Honestly, I was gonna say I don't think I've ever been there when he speed ran. <laughs> uh, I started speed running. I'm. Uh, I started speed running Chip and Dale. Uh, Rescue Rangers on the NES, uh, and then I switched over. And my main speedrun game is my favorite game of all time, Zelda Two. Oh. So what's your uh, what's your best times on it? Have you gotten any close to world records or anything of that nature? Uh, no. The uh, I don't. Uh, no, I uh, so there's a couple of there's a lot of categories and you can go to speedrun.com um, and there are I mean, the brand new Turtles game that just came out, there's already speedrun categories for it. Any game you can think of is probably have a speedrun category. Uh, modern games, old games, everyone speedruns. Um, but the categories I run are the main category, which is the 100 percent completion. Uh, all keys, a one credit clear. Um, I think the world record in that right now is an hour, an hour thirteen, if I remember correctly. That's... And my best, my best time is an hour twenty-seven, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's that's, that's getting good. close. Shoot, it's uh, it's, uh, it's a it's a beautiful game. I love it, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun to speed run. That's awesome. <laughs> Now, chat, I do want to remind you guys, we do have a couple of minutes left. If you want to ask Shrum any burning questions on your hearts and minds, now's the time to do it while we're trying to wrap this up and make sure this man gets to where he needs to get to. Yeah, I'm going to a baseball game tonight with my, uh, with my daughters. Oh, that Ooh, sounds what, like fun. What game? What game? Uh, just a local AAA uh, affiliate. Oh, those ones are always the best, though. <laughs> yep. You guys excited for the game tonight? Yeah. yeah I know you're. <laughs> All right. Well, we heard the excitement. <laughs> Chad, I do want to remind you guys to stay hydrated. Oh, really? Drink some advanced GG. You can use either code Nemesis for 10% off, or you can use code Shrum. There you go. For another 10% for 10% off. You get all these awesome flavors that you can see on my screen. You can see Shrum's drinking his. You can see James has got flavors over there drinking his. What flavors we are we? Uh, what flavors are we dealing with tonight, fellas? What's the poison? My uh, my old standby is always rainbow sherbet, a scoop of rainbow sherbet, and a scoop of strawberry shortcake. Oh, okay, okay. Now, since it's my birthday, I'm getting a little saucy here, so I broke out the strawberry daiquiri. Like, just you know, mm. dude, that's, that's good. a good one. You know, people usually judge me on stream when I start shaking it up. It's like, yeah, I'm a drunk. I know. You know, this is a non-alcoholic powder, but whatever, whatever, you know. But it's my birthday. I can drink what I want. I think. I think. Oh, Air Razor asks, tell the world, why Z2? Air Razor's a damn troll. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Air Razor, Air Razor uh, is one of my mods, and uh, Air Razor, uh, bless her heart. Uh, like like any good mod, uh, gives me my own ration of shit. <laughs> and of especially, course, <laughs> especially, and she doesn't like she doesn't like Zelda too. Mm. Um, so that's kind of why she's kind of why she's trolling there. His love for Z2 is Shrum's biggest failing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bless, bless these people who, despite disliking the games that I play, uh, are still kind enough to hang out and, and spend time with me. Uh, but the real answer, why Zelda 2, 
is um it's one of the first games i remember playing with my dad uh and we spent we spent about a month i would say trying to beat that game and it was you know it was cool to wake up in the morning uh on the weekends and my dad be like hey i just found this new thing and I think I found a way to go to this palace and I think I figured out this and I think I figured out that and just uh, a lot of good memories of, of grinding, uh, grinding that game and playing the game. And, and uh, yeah, that's why, that's why I love Zelda too. And those core memories will stick with you forever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely Cause I, right. I remember <laughs> playing Turok with my dad growing up. Okay. That and uh golden eye. Oh yep. yeah. That's always a fun family favorite. That that got my always. uncles into a fist fight once Golden Knight. Which did. one of you was which one of you was odd job? Um, it was well, we we only had one controller. So <laughs> okay. we didn't do the multiplayer, you know. It's probably kind of trade best. off. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably yeah. for the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my yeah, uncles you know, were, were playing uh Golden Eye one fateful Saturday a family tournament. You know, everybody's supposed to be in good spirits, and someone found no, a never. Somebody found a rocket launcher. Someone <laughs> said, "You expletive, expletive," and they spent no lie. They spent the rest of the day fixing the wall they went through because they tackled one another. And That's awesome. that was at grandma's house, so you know they messed up. <laughs> you you know it was a, a bad time then because she watched them put that wall back together, and we couldn't play the. Nintendo 64 for like three months. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There you go. These grown men, these grown men, you know, just put each other through a wall over, over, the, over the game. The same thing happened with Mortal Kombat and the Sega too, because one of them was a dirty move spammer that did a low kick all the time. So oh my <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of trauma about family game nights. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> James will never have a family game night. You know, it's like, sorry, kids, we can't have a family game night. Why not, Dad? Because I don't want one of you going through a wall or me going through a wall. I don't know yep. if y'all are familiar with it, but I will not have NFL Street Two in this house ever again. Okay, never again. <laughs> We're done. We're done with the sports games. We're done. <laughs> But we are wrapping up. Does anybody got any more questions? Last question, I think, depending on how Shrum answers this, is Ooh. how important or not do you think production values are for streamers? Yours are top-notch and clearly a priority. Ooh, okay. Uh, very important. I think <coughs> that, uh, and that's a, that's a great question. I, you know, we talked earlier about how uh, you just, you know, if you're afraid to do it, just do it and start. Um, I, I encourage that mentality, absolutely. Um, but if you want to grow, uh, you need to focus on production value. Um, everything from, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, a little bit better mic or a little bit better light all the way up to, uh, and I, I always hold this person up as, a, uh, as the pinnacle of production value. Even though they're no longer on Twitch, uh, Doctor Disrespect. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of what you think about <laughs> his personality and the character that he plays, uh, that is top quality production value. <clears throat> and if if Twitch is ever going to and live streaming is ever going to cross over into the mainstream. Um, it has to you have to think about what what are you going to do so that the uh bored housewife or the dad after home from work they sit down on the couch they've got netflix they've got hulu they've got disney plus what are they watching uh, they rarely ever turn on youtube unless they have some reason to you know they don't just sit down you don't just sit down and watch that with the family or your friends how are you going to and so if if ever we're going to cross over into the realm of the common every day you're going to have to have top notch production value now is that a lot of money <laughs> absolutely it is absolutely it is and i don't think that's within the reach of everyone but if you want to grow 
uh, as a streamer, you need to focus on better audio, better lighting. Um, and that's just, that's just the cold hard facts. Like, and I'm not saying you've got to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on it. Um, <clears throat> but, um, <laughs> if they can't hear you and they can't see you, <clears throat> Why are they going to stay and watch? Exactly. And you mm -hmm. you can always start as just a mic. There are many successful streamers and per create content creator personalities who still don't use a camera to this day, but right. they have a way for you to interact with them is what matters. So always yep. start with a mic is, is usually just a good yep. general rule of thumb. That way they can at least hear your voice. They can hear your reaction to the game, even if you're not directly engaging with the audience as long as they're hearing you participate in some way and making that gameplay experience that they could be doing themselves in all honesty more fun more entertaining that's that's the way to go so yeah i yep. fully agree no matter what i think it's new all about having home. ewan says i think new streamers struggle with getting the balance between streaming being a serious endeavor a casual hobby production values point to it absolutely absolutely 100 mm -hmm. and again it goes back to that being honest about why you're doing it if you're just doing it for fun <clears throat> that's one thing if you don't care about how many people are there or, or whatnot that's that's one thing but the range of casual all the way up to serious uh and there's you don't have to invest a lot of money like don't listen to the elgados of the world don't mm -hmm. allow these crap companies to fleece you of money that doesn't need to be spent they're preying on the naivete of new content creators and it's it's reprehensible uh you can get cheap lights you can get cheap microphones that are miles better than when i first started streaming for my first month i was using an iphone 6 as my webcam and i had my headset mic uh off of my uh my headset um the first money I spent to make my stream look more professional, I think I found an overlay kit on Fiverr for like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. That right there is a big difference maker between completely <clears throat> basic and something a little mm -hmm. better. You know, there's, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. You can kind of <laughs> see my light back there. I don't know. You can see my light obviously i might have light on my face that's literally a ring light from home depot that was like 20 bucks yep hey it works <laughs> it works <laughs> yep there's a, there's a thousand ways to skin that cat and uh <coughs> for sure for any of our viewers out there i just want to say that what you see on camera for all of us i think it's fair enough to say it took us years to get to this point years to find the technology that works for us but I think it starts with a passion. You know, you find your personality. You find the way you're going to connect with people. You find the way you're going to groove when you're playing a game. Then it all comes there. So, you know, that's just that's just where it starts. You got to start somewhere and just do it. And uh, definitely want to thank everybody in the chat for showing up. We've had a great number tonight. A lot of people coming through. Uh, definitely thank you and Stripey Lobster. Uh, Floppy for moderating. Word up, brother. Uh air razor for throwing out the burning hot questions and we had sensei solo earlier just so many great personalities um before we go where can people find you shrum you can find me twitch.tv forward slash shrum and you can find me on uh social media twitter and instagram at the real shrum Ooh, okay all right vengeance what about you where can people find you you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash vengeance gaming, except there's no I, it's a one. You know, you've seen me type in chat all night long. Um, mainly a Tarkov streamer right now. Who knows? That's ever changing. I do a variety of stuff. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the vengeance GTTV, I think. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mr. Autumn? Uh, Birthday boy. Twitter at the James Autumn, twitch.tv slash James Autumn. And that's primarily where you're going to find me because I don't keep up with socials on anything else. I have a real bad issue with trying to keep up with socials. I get really lazy, and Twitter is like the one I keep most up on and Discord. But either way, that's where you can find me. And uh, definitely thank you to everybody for coming out for another great episode of Nemesis Insider. This was the 
best episode with Shram. Got to dive in, talk with him, connect with him. I've been wanting to do this forever, so I'm glad we were able to to do this with you. So thank you again for coming on, man. It's been an absolute honor, and I appreciate it. All right, everybody. You we are, are going to. Guest. Yeah, we most definitely. We, we do love you. We do love you. We need to you say that. <laughs> love the NEM fam. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. We are going to pop off here. I don't know who's going to handle the raid, but whoever is doing the raid, now is probably the time to do it. And we will see you I guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.